and uh, get back to it. So, all right. So where we left off is earlier in the day, we got the night watch test running or close to running or found out that, hey, Chrome driver can be a pain to set up because it needs to have matching Chrome versions. Um, but we walked through setting it up locally with PHP unit built in server, SQLite and Chrome driver, also via DDEV and through Lando, which there's all the configurations in this source project, which I'm gonna repaste into the chat in case anybody lost it. Um, and there are already pull requests being fettered out to have this added to the Lando contri contribution um, setup repo thing and also to DDEV's quick sprint setup. So that way you'll be able to like get running with core because although this, this, this repo is set up as a composer template, so it's not very good for contributing to core in it because it has a subtree split of core. If you don't know what that means, it just means it's not the development repo for core. So you would have to follow something like this note about cloning the Drupal repository, getting the example Lando file, which Brian Perry has created a PR for Lando's contribution environment, and if DDEV, configure it, and then get the testing services set up, which we're gonna work on a pull request for the quick sprint command in DDEV. So that was the first part of it. Now let's get to the fun part where we understand like what is happening. Um, so if I scroll up in my history, there should be some tests. So it ran the tests and that's neat and all, but like what's actually happening? How do we write our own test? Um, so we dove through this a little bit before, but I'll bring it through again. Um, inside the core directory, there is, I'm gonna open this ahead of time. There's the test directory inside of its Drupal and then we have the night watch directory. There's a handful of things in here. Tests are, whoa, my screen went weird. This test directory are the PHP unit tests for Drupal core that don't belong to any modules. Um, so we wanna look inside night watch. Actually, that's the unit test directory. So we wanna look at night watch. And inside of night watch, we have the assertions, commands, pages, and test directory, along with globals and nightwatch.config.js. This configuration file is what, you know, just like PHP unit has PHP unit.xml, nightwatch has this file. So all of those um, environment variables that we were configuring, this is where they're read in. So the search directory, by default, it looks in the current directory, um, you know, ignore directories, um, here we go, the source output folder, the commands path. So commands path looks for um, any, any night watch folder that has a commands directory or assertions or pages. And these are all part of the night watch documentation. We'll go through a bit of these with the quick link module and also one of the test modules I've added. Um, and in here, the test settings, this is where the Selenium port and Selenium host. Now remember, Selenium was like the standalone project, but it became an open standard and that is what is called WebDriver. So if you see the terms WebDriver and Selenium used interchangeably, it's because they are. Um, WebDriver is the, you know, the open standard version of Selenium. Um, and that's where all this gets parsed in and Nightwatch reads. So as I brought up that there's the different commands, we'll open this commands file real quick. And one is the Drupal install command. And Nightwatch uses this to, as a node process to run an execution, run the execution of a local command. Um, so that's what this executive exec, execute, there we go, execute synchronously, because you know JavaScript is asynchronous by default. So right here it does this install command, which runs PHP scripts test site install. That's what this test site.php is. It's a mini console application within Drupal and it installs a base Drupal site um, for testing. So this test site application, there's a command in here. We'll pop to it real quick. We wanna look at this test site install and actually this test user login is used as well to log a user in. But the main thing here is a site install. 
sets up an installed version of the site for Nightwatch. Um, just like Drupal's functional tests do a full site install, so does Nightwatch. Um, but instead of calling it directly, like in PHP unit, it's called as a like outside script. So this is great for what we would call like black box testing, where with PHP unit, the PHP unit's running inside of an instance of Drupal. I guess I just kind of decided to pop in because local development is relevant to some of my interests. Um, I do a lot of things with Lando, so just figured I'd hang out here and uh, see how things went. Cool. Thanks for joining. Um, so this this is the script that allows Nightwatch, the Nightwatch test runner, to have a Drupal site installed to work against. Um, and one of the, oops, close that too fast. The, the main, um, item here is this option called the, the setup file. So what happens right when you drush to install a site, you get a bare minimum site. You don't get any extras installed. You have to click through and do so. Um, and this command allows you to pass a setup file. So think of it as like a bootstrap file. Um, you know, like Bootstrap has something to start up, not Bootstrap, the theming library. So when you install the site, it then executes this script to configure the site. And that's what this Drupal install command does, is it will run that, it will parse the simple test user agent cookie and ensure that passes on. Um, if you're not familiar with this, Drupal will read this cookie and this user agent to determine what is the current test database and know that it's working in a test environment. So that is actually a really crucial um, piece. So that's a bit of the inner of that for the install. Like if we looked at login, oh, there's actually where it does a full login. Um, here we go. If you do the command Drupal login as admin, this is another command which runs a script on the server which is like Drush ULI, but as a test site script command, which allows you to log in as user ID one in your tests. And how these are called will pop into tests. So let's just look at example tests. So inside of the test, we have at tags. So the tags documentation is like grouping your tests. When we were running tests before, we did dash dash tag core. Um, everything in here is Dash core, if you had your own module, you would name it after your module, just like your PHP unit test. Um, in the app before, you know, I will actually go to a custom module because I added notes there. Sorry, let me let me go to this Nightwatch example. So inside this repo, I actually did add a Nightwatch example test and I put some notes in there. So let's just go here since I already wrote a bunch of these notes. You have this module up on GitHub or anything? It's, it's inside the repo. So if you go to the project and you go to web modules and under modules, there's custom Nightwatch example, test source Nightwatch. This is all already in the re, um, repository. And just, just to reiterate again, like this, this Drupal testing workshop that I'm creating inside of custom, I'm going to be creating a plethora. I want to have at least 50 different modules showing different test cases and uses. Um, so this will be like my education area for test writing. So if you do want to be able to reference this later on, it is available. Um, and a lot of this is also documented on Nightwatch.js, but we're hitting that weird area where it's um, documentation of the test framework and documentation of, well, it's Drupal using something. And we all know what that's like when you finally hit that point where it's integrated into Drupal. So tags are how tests are grouped and make it easier to run um, because you can run a test directly. Oop, did not want to do that. You know, as we did previously, you can run a test directly by calling it or via a, via a tag. So in here we could do tag core, or for this example, we have workshop. So if I did this command, I don't have everything running, or maybe I do, but if I ran that, it would run my test here. Let's see. 
So it should run by doing tag workshop. It will find my contrib test and it should execute um, hello world test. Yep, found it. It's gonna, I didn't turn it back into headless mode. So again here, it did test hello world test, test suite, it launched Chrome. You can see here that it's hitting the browser and it did, or hitting the browser, hitting the web server. And you can see here that it passed a deep strict equal test. Um, when you write a night watch test, you must add this before statement. Um, when working with the PHP unit test, we're used to having the setup method predefined for us by all of the, um, the base classes. Well, we don't have class inheritance here. So all tests must set up the before hook. And in this, then you must call that, that Drupal install command that we looked at. You need to call Drupal install. Otherwise, if you don't, you won't have a Drupal site. You'll just hit the install page and the site will crash or the, the test will fail, not crash. And in it here, you'll see that we're passing a custom site install test script. Now, we could reuse the one provided by core, but this sets up our module. So I have it in here. So the path matches, it's modules, custom, Nightwatch, test site install. Um, this path should always work regardless if you're in a um, Drupal development repository or in your, um, in your client work because it matches the root path of the doc root. Um, and I can prove that via the quick link module when we pop over to that one. So in here, I have the test site install script and it does one thing. Um, all these scripts must implement test, test setup interface. And this interface defines one thing, setup. You know, it's really simple, but it's just that way when you're implementing it, you know, like, oh, I must have a setup command. And all we do is install the module because there's no way to define that um, inside the test. Not like in our PHP unit where you have protected modules and it's an array of modules to install. You have to write the setup script, which is like a bootstrap that says, okay, Drupal was installed, now do things. And anything that you need prepared for your test is done in here. And we'll look at the quick, like I said, the quick link module. Um, we'll look at that afterwards because it does a little bit more. So Drupal's installed, it calls that script, which installs this Nightwatch example module. Um, just like you have to call the before hook, you must also call the after hook to uninstall Drupal. Um, if we look at the commands, uninstall calls the script once more and drops the database. It runs the teardown command. And if you don't run this, well, then you're going to have a pre-existing site. And I cannot recall if the test site setup will fail if there's an existing database. It should. Um, I haven't tested that in a while. So after that, we can finally start defining our tests. Um, if you've worked with any JavaScript testing frameworks like Jest, Mocha, I think Chai's one, I don't know, they're all named, uh, half of them are named after like a cafe, um, cafe drinks. But it's essentially, we're just adding it to the object. So this is our test name. See here, running visit a test page. We have visit a test page. And it is, this value is a function. This is the shorthand for anonymous function. If you're not used to ES6, this is, is equivalent to writing function browser. Um, Nightwatch will pass a browser instance to your callback, to your closure, um, and that has all of the available commands attached. Um, commands are either provided by not Nightwatch.js or through modules or core itself. So unfortunately, there isn't really great, there isn't great um, type hinting for this and automatic completion. So if you're okay with having to go dig things up, you're gonna have to or kind of remember them. Luckily, there aren't too many helpers. 
So it's pretty easy to find them because they're all right here. So what this does is browser, browser Drupal relative URL. So let's just look here. What this does is it just ensures that you're going to the test base URL. Um, because otherwise, like what if you're running it in a subdirectory like Drupal CI does? So Drupal CI has all tests under, um, what is it? Localhost slash checkout. It's something different now because this actually broke Drupal Commerce with having it be under slash checkout. But let's say it's like localhost slash environment dot nxphp. So this is their base. Whereas for you know all of us that are running it locally, we don't have a subdirectory. But that command just allows subdirectory support. And then the browser object is documented on nightwatchjs.org under the API reference. So in, in, the, in the API reference, there's the assert, expect, page object, API commands. All of this can be gone through to find the core items that are available. But we'll go to the very bottom. Or maybe it, we'll go to document handling, sorry, to execute. So execute allows us to run JavaScript in the browser that's being tested. So in this case, we're not testing an element necessarily. We want to test some data that's on the page. And what we have is inside our module, we implemented hook page attachments. If you're not familiar with this hook, use this hook to add um, libraries or Drupal settings or HTML head elements that are across every single page or across conditional pages, I guess, if you have logic in here. But it's, it's meant to be attached to the page, not specific elements. So in here, we're adding a Drupal settings called Nightwatch test with echo hello world. So if we were to visit our browser in the um, console, we would do Drupal settings. We'd be able to type Drupal settings dot nightwatch nightwatch test and Drupal would return. The console would return an object that looks like this. So we wrote a test to make sure that our hook page attachments is properly bubbling this Drupal settings data into, um, you know, it's actually being attached. So in this, the execute command takes a function and this first function is executed in the browser. So we're returning Drupal settings, which is the global object. And then we want the night watch um, property the second command allows you to pass extra arguments to the function that's called. Yes, we do have a dog cam joining us today. And then the third parameter is the important one because this is called with the result. So once this function is called with these parameters, the result is passed to a third closure a callback. And that's something we can do in assert. So the browser object has the node.js assert library attached. So anything that's available in the assert library is available here. Um, I had to go look that up. So if you go to assert, um, the methods from the base node.js assert module are also available. So anything that you use for testing in node.js is available here. Um, I feel like Maybe I was in PHP storm, but this did actually autocomplete at one time. Um, it might have been because of PHP storm or web storm. Um, but what we're doing in here is we're doing a deep strict equal. And this sounds weird, but there is just equal is deprecated. So they made everything be strict equal. But the problem with strict equal is the objects aren't exactly the same. So we use deep streak equal deep strict equal, which just is like a, it goes and makes sure that all the properties match, but it's not the same object. Um, so we're asserting that on our page, we have this object called echo hello world. So we, with this test, we were able to verify that this JavaScript document was this, the JavaScript settings were on the page. Now that's one of the benefits with Nightwatch is if we did this in PHP unit, it would be harder um, when when thinking about just testing elements on the page 
it's kind of like, well, what's the benefit of Night Watch over functional tests? We even had this discussion in the D9 theme channel of when you're using functional tests, you can just as easily assert content on the page in the DOM. Um, you can fire certain commands, but it's harder to test some of these scenarios, some of this interaction um, when writing PHP to talk to WebDriver versus just running JavaScript code. Because you can technically execute JavaScript code in the functional JavaScript tests from PHP unit, but this is just much more, um, it's easy, it's easier. So that's that's writing and running a Nightwatch test. Um, before moving on to the next step, I wanted to show the quick link module. So this is a module written and maintained by our very own guest, Mike Herschel, though we can't see him because we just see his dog staring at somewhere in his backyard. Um, and he was having, Mike, I don't quite remember what happened, but like something was wrong. Something was broken and we needed to write a test. And I was like, hey, there's this new thing in core called Nightwatch. Let's try it out. So we wrote a integration test and the quick link module, for those who don't know, integrates with this library called um, quick link, which is why it's called that. And it will read it like watches links that are in your viewport and prefetches them. So that way when somebody clicks that link, it's like an instant load. So it's like having a single page app without having a single page app. So we wrote an integration test to verify that the library is loaded. So in our test, you know, we tagged it as quick link and we wrote a, um, an install script or a setup script. The setup script does a little bit more than the previous, previous example. It not only installs the module, but it modifies the settings and turns on debug mode because when this module installs, um, debug mode is turned off but since we're in a test we want to flip this on so we can have it be more verbose so that's the point of some of these these um setup scripts it's not only to install various modules but allows you to modify certain parts of the state um, after this we're going to move into writing one for the olivero theme so you could use this to modify some of the olivero settings versus having it be done manually in the test so our test then goes to a relative URL, the login script. And if you notice here, we have a custom assertion called quick link exists. And that's what this assertion folder is for, is to hold custom assertions. Um, you should notice that there's nothing here that tells Drupal to find this file. When I looked at that night, when I opened up the Nightwatch configuration, it knows to find this pattern of test source Nightwatch assertions and anything in there should be registered as a custom assertion. And we use this to verify that the quick link library is valid on the page. So the assertion is that to write your own assertions are also documented in the API reference, or actually I think it's the developer guide um, for extending and custom assertions. Like it walks through it pretty well. I remember this wasn't too hard. Um, so you create this expected, which is true. Like the assertion is that this should return true. This pass, we it passes if the return value is strictly equal to true. Um, the value, this is a, you could call it a reducer or a mutator, whatever you want to call it. It just says, based on the value object, what's the actual value that's being called to the pass function? And in this case, it's result.value. Popping back to the other item quick, whenever you call the execute command, the result has is an object. There's the result has like the session ID, um, another property, and then value. The value property is the result of what was executed. So we now have the command. We do this API execute, and we check if the quick link, if the global quick link object is a function and that's our result. Um, so we return the result and the result.value should be true and it passes if that's true. So I have a question for you. Yeah. So, I mean, could you do something where you're running like the exec command and you and you just say the global quick link is a function in, in the exec command, but, but you put that in um, 
the actual test as opposed to an assertion or an Yes, we assertion. could have done that. Um, okay. I realized that, like, you know, I didn't know. I don't, I don't remember why I went this route yeah. um, when we wrote this because we could have easily just done this. What I wrote here is the simpler version that we could have had inside the quick link module, basically. Mm -hmm. So this, this line of code inside of um, this example performs the same operation almost as this assertion. So this could have been put into the main test instead of being its own standalone assertion. I probably also wanted to help create an example for people um, when writing this. Um, like I know after all, after we do the Olivero thing, there isn't a command for asserting Drupal settings. So I'll probably be, op I'll be opening a um, issue for core to add this mm -hmm. as a command, as an assertion, like assert Drupal settings, pass a key and it returns that key value because um, we don't have that. So for example, if we wanted to modify this, so here, here's a tenant of test driven development, right? We wrote the test and it passed. Now we're gonna change things and make sure it still passes. So I could change this to say, um, to change this to key. So we're gonna pass a parameter of key and we'll pass the key value, the, the key parameter as a um, object re key reference. Like f take, take this key out of the Drupal settings and we'll pass it as an argument here as a string. So what we've done here, I'll move some things around to make this easier to read, is we're telling it to execute this function and pass these parameters to it. So now we've made this function reusable and this could be moved into its own assertion or helper method um, like command get Drupal settings. So if I run the test again, one second, I'm gonna make sure it runs headlessly so it's a little bit faster and quieter. Copy, paste. Alright. So now we we put the the key we want from the Drupal settings into a, a an argument for the function that gets executed, and it should. And we brought this to Drupal we have a command or assertion or some kind of helper for testing the data push to Drupal settings because there isn't one right now. Um, so it ran. So it's still passed. That's great. And if I don't do this, I hope somebody else does or reminds me to make a core issue for this. So we have that. And these two examples kind of showed interacting with the JavaScript, like the state of the site. Um, if we look here, so Claro has an autocomplete test. So it goes in and it goes to admin modules. It sets the value of the search for form API test. It waits for it to be visible. And this is where things are like, well, we can test this with functional tests. Like this right here could be done without JavaScript for a lot of it. Um, actually, sorry, not the whole typing part and waiting for it to be visible. So what this does here is it shows that the, the type to search works on admin modules. And then this whole wait for element to be visible gives it a second to wait and make sure that it shows up. And then it clicks on the, oh, so this just sets up and turns on Claro as a default theme, which again, this could be a custom test custom setup script like it doesn't need to click through it but it does test a few things did, did you say that the functional javascript tests can't wait for an element no because they can they, they can but it, okay. it would not work but this helps test um basically let me rephrase it everything you see here we can do in functional javascript tests there's nothing in this section um, we do this all the time in Drupal Commerce tests where it's like assert, wait for, you know, jQuery to finish, wait for the thing to be visible. Um, inside of 
No. Um, functional. WebDriver WebAssert. So if we, sorry, let me, if I'm going to, no. JS WebAssert, there we go. So for example, in here, it's very similar to items we have in here where it's assert wait on Ajax request. Um, we're able to execute where the session right here is a mink session. Mink is the library. Um, mink session that connects to the web driver instance, Chrome driver, and the, the condition is, ex, is JavaScript code. So we are able to execute JavaScript code via functional JavaScript as well. Um, so everything that we read in this Claro autocomplete test can be done here. Um, and a lot of times has been done. There are core tests for the for the entity reference autocomplete written in functional JavaScript. So for here, wait for element to be removed. It does a wait for. This is also executing a JavaScript command. Um, wait for element to be visible. So a lot of these things are possible with the functional JavaScript. Um, where it becomes that, and that's where it's like kind of like a hard line to draw. It's like, well, which should I use? And like I said, in the D9 theme, like Brian, Mike, and I, we sat a few times and like, well, this could be, it's like, well, I don't know, should it? And kind of back and forth, back and forth. But it really is useful when testing the, the state of your JavaScript. And like I said, you could do it with the PHP code, but it's just more natural and a little bit easier to do here. And that's why this was added. The um, admin UI, is it? Was it the was it the admin UI or the JavaScript modernization initiative? And they were both like one and the same. Um, really needed this because it made testing so much easier, and it's actually paying benefits now that we're working on the decoupled menus initiative. And yeah, so from another another thing from my perspective is just to think of a JavaScript developer, you know, having to go write their JavaScript in PHP to test their code. Yeah. Um, I could be much more natural for them to write something in Nightwatch, I think. Yes. So there, there is that. And that's one where, you know, this wait for element to be visible is provided by um, Nightwatch.js. So if we went to API, wait for, maybe not. It should be. Let's see. Let's search. So yeah, so that's that's given, and you know what? I bet under the hood, it's running the same kind of JavaScript code. Um, so they're very similar, but it is just one like it feels a bit more natural to test JavaScript code with JavaScript than in PHP. Um, you know, Java people do it all the time, though, right? They have Java code that runs Selenium and WebDriver and test JavaScript, but we we yeah, it, this is this makes it easier for others to contribute and to do more complex things, um, which we're about to do one of those complex things. Um, we're going to write a patch for Olivero to test out um, a feature it has, um, which I don't have, let's see, let's very quickly. Go to lb.cm slash Olivero if you want. Whoa, what, lb. CM slash Olivero. You're a lifesaver. Yeah. This is like the latest. Right oh, here. not almost. You almost are. Oh, there we go. I just had to make the screen bigger. Yeah. So we're going to write a test. And the Olivero theme has these awesome, this awesome menu. But wait, there's more. <gasps> <laughs> wait, sorry. When you scroll, the menu collapses. And what we're gonna write a test for, we're gonna test that. Right? We're gonna we're gonna test that when you scroll that this collapses, and we're gonna test that when the browser window shrinks, we get the mobile menu. Um, so we're gonna do some live coding here. Um, I've only written two Nightwatch tests in my life. Then the quick link one a year and eight months ago. And then two nights ago, I wrote the hello world test. So we'll see what happens. And this, like I said, this repo is not set up for core contribution, but luckily I should be able to just copy and paste. I can copy and paste it into a branch for Drupal core. Um, so let's get to it. 
So we're going to create a new test called do they do they want all the tests inside this folder? Because this feels weird. Brian or Mike, do you know? Let's just, that, I would think let, they do. I would say, like, let's put it in for right now and let them tell us no. Because it feels like more appropriate to actually put it in Olivero. Because yeah. It, it does theme it does test discovery for themes. Yeah. Put it put it where Claro puts theirs for right now. Like Claro's, like we can we can okay. change it later. Because Claro only puts has one test. Yeah. Well, for now, we will put it here <laughs> because we're just doing an example and trying to teach. Instead of me going down the rabbit hole of like, well, let's bike shed the placement of this test. Let's yeah. just get to it. So we'll call it Olivero um, menu test .js. So we do our module dot exports. You know, I want to see. Is there a Ooh, look at that. Yeah, but these are always bad. <laughs> Sorry, I have I apparently I have way too high of expectations and I expect the world to just be a perfect place all the time. So don't mind me. Alright, let's see. We'll see how well this works. And hopefully it helps auto complete a few things. So, because I don't have this memorized by heart yet, so let's we'll do a side by side. Um, can everybody see this okay? I can. Or do I need, do I need to enlarge it? Because I can enlarge it too. I can see it. I have a pretty small screen. <laughs> All right. So we'll do tags. We're gonna take it. It's core, but you know what? I like to have lots of tags because I don't want to run all of core. I want to be able to run core and just the Olivero things. Um, so we've got our tags. Let's do a before and we're going to do browser and we'll do browser dot Drupal install setup file. Um, we're going to create our setup file because I don't want to do all this. This is just ick. I don't want to click all that stuff. Um, we're writing a test should be fast um, and we'll do we'll copy this after. All right, so the setup file we need to create. Let's look at this, this other test. So setup file, we'll copy that line. Now we can close. From here, we can close all that. I think we've got the scaffolding. So inside of core test Drupal test site, test. Drupal test site um, test site install script so they have a test site multilingual install script which pre-install copies over some ver some translations that's new I didn't know that um, test site install we're gonna copy that and we'll call it test site Oh, very. You know what? It's can you install themes from the from the um command line decently even? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yes. I mean, Claro has that test, so but they they manually install it, and I guess I could do that. Well, in the PHP tests, they do something to install. It. Here, let me let me try to dig it up. And since I'm not in PHP Storm, I have no idea what anything's called right now. So pardon me. So I'm used to the Symphony plugin, which auto completes a bunch of stuff. So I don't know. Jack Dataly Theme Manager. Is it Theme Manager that installs things? I think so. All right. We'll find out. And I guess we can just do service. And we'll say assert theme installer instance of, I'll clean this up to be um, our code standards friendly. Actually, I'll just do it now. Let's see, change all occurrences to theme manager. So theme manager, whoa, two cursors. So theme manager install, no. 
It's not theme manager. I uh, copied and pasted some stuff in the chat. Oh, there you go. That's beautiful. Thank you. Saving the day. So theme installer. So it was theme installer. That's the one thing with core that kills me is we have thing underscore and thing period. Um, now, I know like habits change, but it's like, oh, I wish like we could like make aliases to some of those. So that way we know what's going on. So we'll do an assert. The reason why I'm doing an assert here is so that way we get the auto completion. Because right now the um, IntelliSense, IntelliSense, whatever they call their like um, their static analysis inside VS Code, has no idea what this means. Like service returns mixed. So by doing an inline assert, we're telling the um, interpreter, the, the command line, the editor interpreter, like what it actually is. So we'll do theme installer, and now see we do install, and it gives us a list of things. And we'll kind of copy it verbatim. And then we'll get the config factory. So we do Drupal config factory. Get editable the, uh, system dot theme. Oh, sorry, that's just config. We'll just say config. Copy the no, that's not it. Sorry. Copy from Zoom. Paste in the editor. All right. So what this should do then for us is we'll have a test site setup script that ins that gets the theme installer, installs Olivero, and sets it as the default theme. So let's go find this file again in our sidebar. I'm going to copy the relative path and paste that here and drop the web prefix. Why is this? Um, all right, so let's run the test. So we're gonna say um, on scroll menu collapses to, what do you call that, the mobile menu? We'll say mobile menu. Uh, call we, it, shit, like we just renamed it in an issue, call it hamburger button or so. mm -hmm. just mobile, mobile menu and I'll change it later. We're going to say, I'm can scroll. you, can you, use a can you, can you use a hamburger emoji? Hold on. Let's see if the. I can put one in chat if you want. I'm, I'm trying to do the shortcut of control command space bar. Yeah. And now it's going to randomly pop up in about three minutes when I start typing. <laughs> um, and I can't get my touch bar just shows zoom and I can't, I can't open the thing. So yeah, if you paste it, I'll get it in. Oh, no, there was. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna throw it in here. There it is. All right. Oh. <laughs> Brutal. You know who? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, there we go. Um, so what we want to do is we're gonna do some assertions of. So we, we need to know what state we're working with. So we have the site header and it's site header fixable and fixable and JS fixed is what seems to be the trigger. If I delete JS fixed, the menu gets, oh, it does go back. Okay. So if I removed this fixable and JS fixable, we get the menu back. Um, so the let's, let's the you you want to do the JS fix, not the fixable. I know, but just to, oh, so okay. if I removed, how can I? 
Okay. What What are you trying to do right now? Just like I'm just trying to show that we could turn it off. I'm, I'm trying to analyze the state to know like what it means if it was <laughs> fixed. Which this is it. Like mm -hmm. that's. So okay. we basically need to assert that when we scroll, JS fixed is attached. <laughs> Is there any way instead of that that we can assert that the button is visible? Yes. Which button? Uh, the button that appears right yeah. there. Right now it, it goes to, uh, I, I think it goes from like, yeah, visibility visible and then there's visibility hidden. So we need to assert that it's like visibility visible Perfect. right now. Yeah, we can. Um, so, let's, so let's get to finding... Let's let's look at the docs. I'm gonna try to like browse the Nightwatch docs versus the test. Normally, I just go through all the tests and I poke around till I find what I need. Um, but I know the way that I do things doesn't necessarily work best for everybody. So let's learn how to browse the Nightwatch docs instead of poking around aimlessly in tons of files as I furiously scroll around. Um, so let's go to developer guide. No. Writing assertions. Sure. Can do. Um, oh, finding what was that? Somebody had a question. No. Okay. We want to write a new assertion or find an existing assertion. We're going to use that. existing. I clicked the wrong link. I want to make sure I use all the things that they have before going on a tangent and using other items. Um, so we'll use browser dot. What was the I know we need to look up this part. It's the Drupal relative URL. So Drupal relative URL. We want to go to the home page. And actually, isn't there some default content, Mike, that gets added to the home page? Uh, yeah, there is. Um, so we can test for that too. Let me bring that up for you really quick. I'll, I'll shoot you a tugboat link in a second here. Okay. I'll show you what that looks like. Well, while that goes, I'm going to realize that this doesn't have SQL like oh yeah okay, here we go we'll see who's faster my computer or tugboat my bet is tugboat um, does it be great to also assert that you know we're on the home page and we have Olivero um, data um, maybe there's a way we could do that here So if I go to Drupal settings, there is nothing. I'm uh, I'm gonna throw into into the chat here the the uh, without the, like the default state without content with the standard profile as soon as I can find my window here. Okay. Somewhere. There it is. Oh, open Chrome. And Tugboat was faster than my computer. All right, so we're going to say, we're going to assert for this text. Actually, we'll assert for this one because it's awesome. Yeah, because yeah, because that. The Drupal community. Yep. The Olivero is dynamic right there, so that might change. That's like the site name. Oh, okay. So, yep. So we want to do browser.assert. Uh, contains text. Hey, look at that. Great. So the snippets do work. I take hey. it back. <laughs> take back any presumed negativity. Um, so let's look for what selector we would want to check. Um, let's check for block content. So we'll say the CSS selector is block content and that might that there might be multiple block content or yeah yeah you're yeah, right yeah. you're right um because that's not the main one i would use like the id of the main content or whatever and that's what you should do so one of if you're a person that's like oh, i don't like having ids littered throughout throughout the code like this is one reason they are kind of nice because when you do testing like this it's great to have 
it added. So let's turn off prettier for now. Can I? Oh, I don't know. We'll have to just deal with the error marks. Um, all right, so we've, we wrote our setup file and we've got a base test right now. Like, let's just run it to make sure that the hamburger test can get this content to be shown, which verifies that um, our setup script installed Olivero. So we tagged it with Olivero, not just core, because I don't want to run all the other core tests. Um, and we'll see if this runs. I just want to say this is so cool. Thank you, Matt. No problem. And Brian. It's all Matt. So thank Matt. <laughs> all right. Uh, never mind, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I would make the CSS selector something like um, block Ol Olivero content space H2, or if you want to use just content, ID content, add a space H2 so it's not searching all the text on the page. And it's, I th it's thought fun. about that, um, but I don't know how specific we want to be for the main content. But you're right, because main is literally main of everything. So we could do... Um, that region content would be good. And then... Uh, or or the, you see that block, Olivero content? That, yeah, like that, that would be, that would be a good one right because there. Because yeah. that's a standard Drupal block yeah. ID. Um, and then well, H2. Wh where it says Olivero, is that like... I'm trying to think of where that Olivero... If that comes from the site name. It might be. Let's look. Yeah. yeah, it says page title, so we'll just leave that. We're gonna go back to our test real quick though. And type error Drupal relative URL is not a function. Well, it should be. So let's look at our test, because that means I probably did something wrong. So example tests. Um, so we've got the before. So our test name is wrong, long. So this browser, blah, blah, blah. It's case sensitive. Did I forget? Yep, that's why. Oh, no. Thank you. Um, and, you know, I guess we could even be more generic. Like here it says assert body or contains text in the body, but I like the specif specificity, being specific here. Um, Specificity? Specificity. Specificist, I can't. I, I am horrible with words and talking. Um, there are certain words that I just cannot say. Uh, and I always feel bad when after, whenever I have to do names because I my pronunciation is deplorable. Um, so in the future, if I ever have to say your name and I say it horribly, I just, I'm sorry. Um, all right, so we've got it running. We should not get any errors now. And if it passes, oh, unmet dependencies. Oh, interesting. So, um, so it couldn't be located, but that's because the block module doesn't ex. Wait, unmet dependencies block. Alavero account menu. Because it's missing the block module. So just like kernel tests, we have to enable 5,000 different dependencies. Is there a way you can just install the standard profile? Yep. Yep, there is. Um, and I found that minimal is usually enough. Yeah, that's a good point. Because instead of testing, because if we look at Drupal install, you'll see here that the install profile is Nightwatch testing, which I had no idea that existed. And where are our profiles? Profiles, Nightwatch testing. Minimal profile for running Nightwatch tests includes the absolutely required modules only. Um, where testing adds page caching. I, I, I like having leaner tests, but will night will all of it will break if we don't have views and block enabled? No, it's not going to break. And and honestly, like that test should should still work, like uh, uh, with the minimal profile. So we'll try minimal. Yeah. Yeah. For the other for the PHP unit functional tests, I've had to use minimal. All right. It, it probably could be made more efficient, but I'm going to double check. I have a tugboat preview for minimal too. I'm just going to make sure that doesn't. Uh... The reason why, just so everybody knows, like why that broke, 
is the configuration dependency. So on install, it must be able to install blocks. And you can see here, um, dependencies. Oh wait, user account menu. It was the user menu? Well, so, um, menu. Uh, so that is, that's actually not gonna work on the minimal. Uh, that test is gonna fail on the minim minimal account because uh, that, that front page is generated via views, which is not installed. So we need standard. We're just gonna do yeah. standard. We're gonna yeah. avoid any fanciness. I'm trying to have a lean test and we're just yep. gonna, and do it. Um, so that's interesting. It's probably because it's a block config, and even though I like this is one thing that it it has a module dependency on system, but it also needs to technically have one on block because block config entities are provided by the block um, module. Yeah. 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 The block module provides block config entities. Block content provides content blocks. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why that this failed. Is it explicitly said on install, these blocks must be installed, but the block module did not exist. Yeah, um, they, they, it might be worth moving those over to optional too. But then, the, then the, well, we wouldn't be able to test the menu because the menu is placed yeah. via blocks. So we, we can use the standard install. Hopefully it doesn't make it take too much longer. Um, you know, one fix would be to um, have, We would take the module installer. And do you is we would have it install block and views. Yes, blocks. yeah. Um I guess the fix would just be to add the dependency in there. Or that, well, but themes can't have yeah. dependencies. Can they? Yeah, they can now. Then, yep. That's new. But, um, but I mean, like the config would have a dependency, right? I, I'm not quite sure how that works. Yeah, anyway. You would, you, I, would, you would move it to optional. And yeah. once the dependency is available, that like help, like once the help module is installed, the optional dependencies will install. Um, which is a fun deep dive into the config system if everybody wants to do that later. Um, but our test, look at the hamburger. We, we have text. So great, the Olivero theme is installed. It's working. Um, we're gonna start working on the test more. I'm gonna rerun it with the standard profile commented out to see if the changes to the install script work. So our next step is we need to take the header which we're gonna work with the header ID and I believe I wanna see if there's a way to get the specific element returned and do more scoped um, inspections, but maybe not. So let's go to API reference. We wanna to go to assert page object, API commands, element. So That would let us get the element. Um, I did want to look at the example test. Page test page. What does this do? Oh, that just gets random stuff. Okay. Um, sorry. So we'll go. And now we're going to do browser dot assert dot element hmm. we're going to assert that the oh wait we were going to look at the button that's right the button the button the button um we want to assert this button which has nav wide so let's look at this api reference so finding element um, we want to do assert. So assert attribute contains, contains text. You know, contains visible. Here we go. Is there an invisible? Oh, not. That's right. Everything has an optional not chaining. So we want to do um, browser.assert not 
visible. Expect that doesn't look right. Um, okay, I'm not trusting any of the assertions that this is giving me. Um, so we want it to be button dot that correct um that looks yeah. right yeah button there and now we're gonna see how to do a scroll so let's do scroll element id clear element id value is there a way to just like element interaction Unlike actions, they will immediately scroll elements into view and check that it is an interactable. Oh, there we go. Move to element. Move the mouse by an offset of the specified element. Um, so I guess what we'll have to do. It just got to be like a scroll down or something, right? Because you don't want to move the mouse. I'm looking on Stack Overflow right now, and it says there is no native method to do scrolling. What you should do is get location in view for uh, whatever anchor is going to pop you down. Yeah, gotcha. that's what this is going to be. So what we want to do is we're going to just move down to the um, to the body text. So we'll just this should be um, uh, content. So browser that move to element. But then it gives, what is this X offset? Relative to like, the top yeah. corner. Oh, if we want Move to, element moves the mouse. Get location in view, uh, I think, uh, scrolls the browser. OK, get location in view. Automatically wait for the element to be present. If the element is not found, an error is using selector okay so yeah this looks like it still requires an element you could use the footer oh yeah so we'll just scroll all the way down to the footer mm -hmm. perfect you, you you should just be able to use like uh yeah dot site footer that should be fine oh we're gonna get even more specific than that <laughs> why <laughs> So, all right, so we're going to do assert not visible, then move to element and assert that it is visible. Um, and we should also, this is the menu, right, inside of here? Yeah, and the, the, the menu currently, like, it's, 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 uh, it's kind of translated, but it's not removed from the DOM, so I don't really know how Visible would, would react uh, handle. to that. Yeah, so I should probably Google that. So what is that? Is Visible Nightwatch? Yeah, how do you – all right, in VS Code, how do you duplicate a line of code? Option down? Nope. Because it's not Command-D. Oh, I usually just highlight. I usually like hit sh Shift Command Left, and it highlights the whole thing. And then I uh, Control C and Control V it, or Command V C. Well, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out if it's not visible because it shouldn't be, but it it is technically. Um, and that would fail because that's I need to put an ID on that. So let's just run the test. Let's see where we get. Um, oh, that did fail in here. So I'm going to go back and say it has to be the shift alt down. That's it. Thank you. I was doing, um, wait, hold on. Shift alt. Ah, there it is. Okay. Thank you. Um, so in this, in the install script test, just installing the block and views module didn't seem to do it. So we'll just install the standard profile. <gasps> it was an IntelliJ key binding. Should just use IntelliJ. All right. 
so we're going to rerun this again. And the goal is to, to be, we know we got the text to be present. We're going to assert the button is not visible. We're going to scroll down to the footer and make sure that brought the buttons visible and that the menu is not visible. And one thing I do want to do is be able to view some of this awesome goodness. Um, so we're going to comment that out and run it again in a little bit. Oh, all your tests should be highlighted in emojis um, all the time. That's the only way you should communicate. If you're going to work in JavaScript, that's the only way you can talk is in hieroglyphics of emojis. Um, all right. It's just such a bummer because it takes so long when we do the standard install. Like, I want to know why this failed. Well, so, that's the type of thing we could, um, if you leave like that whole, like installing the blue, uh, block and views commented out in there. Um, w that's something we could work on. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave it. And that's something I can do not during this training. Yeah. Um, no such element. Okay. Oh, is not visible so i bet i know why so right I'm, I'm actually really glad this failed so the button is not visible expected is not visible but oh it could not even be located no i think that makes sense because you're trying to uh oh wait where's your yeah I, i'm not sure that button actually exists until it's scrolled down i don't think it's not visible i don't even think it's there well, it exists. It exists in the HTML. So, you, yeah. so you should you should be able to uh, you should be able to find it there. Yeah. Yeah. There so it is. It's there. Um, so we're going to now. This is why it's nice not to run things headlessly. We're gonna we're gonna run it and let it launch and see if it hangs enough. Um, because it waited five seconds for it to be visible. Um, all right, so there we go. And if you're really fast, you can open this, but you need you can open the dev tools for the test browser, but you need to pop it out right away because otherwise it changes the viewport and that can screw up things if it kicks into like responsive design and things shift around. Is there a way to pause it? Um, n n yes, but not in it. <laughs> you, you have to run like, you know, like PHP, you're like sleep for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. You'd have to write something like that. Like you'd have to write your own like set timeout. Okay. Um, but even then that's not blocking. So I don't remember. I found a way to do it. But since JavaScript is asynchronous, um, mm. I can't remember what you have to do. All right. So... There's the here. problem. All right. Oh, too slow. Um, does it show up on a standard install without? Yeah. yeah, it'll be there. Cool. Thanks. Random error. Um, it's not visible. Well, what? I guess we'll just do not exist. Um, so we'll do element not present, but that's just seems wrong because it is present. Um, let's see if we're able to hold on. So it should be writing reports and creating screenshots. Ah, oh, thank goodness. All right. So every time we ran this, apparently it created tests and 
So that's minimum. Yeah, that. Oh, so, oh, it's um, if you go up one right there, you have the mobile menu, like so, the screen shot or the the screen width is too narrow. Yep, and that's a common bug. Um, everybody that's worked with Behat, I'm sure, has worked with that, where it's like, oh, I gotta make sure in my pre-test that it widens the browser screen. Um, so if we do resize window. And we'll change it to 1000 by 800. And we'll make that a before. And it'll need to be wider than that. Uh, make, yes. make it for, for the, I think like that goes away at like 1200 pixels or something like that. Or at or with, yeah. Oh, I was hoping that you could like resize your screen that way. I don't know if you can. No, nope. instead you just break JavaScript apparently, and <laughs> <laughs> you you can set it. Um, so we'll change it to fourteen hundred. Mm -hmm. All right. So JavaScript's fun. You can set the the property, and it doesn't reset. Um, so we'll rerun it, and now we have um, we we know so in the reports it is generating um, screenshots and the XML output which can be parsed as J unit um, for your CI results there's got to be a way to save the the HTML too so that way we could see what's happening there oh ah, no it opened in the, the Chrome there we go Thank you for finding the way to pause. Too bad there's not a way to like unpause it in viewing, um, yeah, like which is one reason. Input. What? Or like wait for user input. Yeah, and that's one reason a lot of people have become fans of Cypress, which Cypress is a um, it's a really neat testing suite. I th think it's too much. But it gives you like a, it's a full like Chrome, like Electron app that runs Chromium and WebDriver and like gives you like a visual test running system. Um, it's great, but it's like so heavy. It's just so, so heavy. But that's that, you know, but it has a lot of like nice user features. Um, I didn't see it scroll because it didn't even find the button to be invisible. So it can't even assert that the button's not visible because it can't find it. So that's where we're going to set it to not present. But I just wanted to. Yeah. Um, so we're going to change it to not. So it's just weird because it should be. But you know what? Let's see something real quick. Um, that might be true. It, it it's set to visibility hidden at this point, and it also has an opacity of zero. So look at yeah, but things. look below. Do you see? It does get set to display none. But that yeah, that doesn't. Yeah. Display flex. I'm so. Yeah, you see right there. But why is it? And it has so an it has an opacity of zero somewhere in there too, because we animate the opacity, or maybe we. Oh no, uh, we animate the icon right there. So the icon has an opacity of zero. And let me see why isn't it showing up? Go back to the parent item. Display, check the box for display flex. There oh. you go. Okay. Well, we're just going to try this n not present. That just feels incorrect, but that's what it's telling us. So um, let's run the test again. Because it is weird. When I run um, the query selector in the console, it, it finds it. So it is present. Um, we'll see. 
It was so much fun. Just so much fun. Just working with the Dom. Just throwing down some X Path. <laughs> not being able to find a button. Yeah, I wish there there should be a way to um, replicate um, scrolling down the page with JavaScript. That's not necessarily like a Nightwatch um, API function. There is. Um, and that's ideally what would want to be run. Um, this, it, I, I'm assuming that's what it's doing in the background when we say like scroll to this element. I still would like to just run JavaScript that says scroll. It's easy. It's just like window dot scroll to move to element expects method expects four arguments given two. Oh, so I really so this worked. Element not present worked. Um, mm -hmm. I just didn't. And don't forget to cha change line twenty three, or or no, change line twenty two to uh, element present present right or can we keep it visible um i think we can keep it visible because we, we want to make sure it's not only present but visible yeah um uh, what what was i oh move to move to element hold the phone well that's a selector x y okay so expects four or five How can I expect four elements? The docs say selector, offset, Y offset, optional callback. Okay, that should be fine. But I just saw there's move to. Oh. Let's try this. Is it moving to mouse though? We want move to the mouse by an offset specified the web by the web element ID or relative to the current mouse cursor if no element is specified. But the thing is, when you move the mouse, it doesn't scroll it. You're right. What does this say? Well, this says move the mouse as well. What about exe executing some JavaScript and just doing a window dot scroll to? That's what we'll try. I just want to try this move to real quick. So it's X. Okay. Hold on. X is up and down, right? No, X is just left and right. So Y is up. Okay. Um, I'm the person who gets lefty, loosey, righty, tighty <laughs> mixed up because <laughs> you're you're spinning them. Like it's always it's going left and right. Like it doesn't like it's still going both directions technically. Um I get very easily confused by my things. Um so what would be the, the JavaScript that gets so since this is now loaded, the JavaScript it's, would be it's it's window wind yeah, browser execute or whatever, but it's a uh, window dot scroll to let me type it out in here. So that way I have it. So yeah, window, window dot scroll to. There you go, and then um, X Y so zero, and then say like yeah, four hundred. Okay, so that's exactly what this should that move to should be doing. Yeah. Um, because I'm assuming when it says the mouse, like because it doesn't actually ever click anything, but it has to move. I, I think when it says the mouse, it means like what's in the viewport. No, I think it means the mouse, so you can test hover states. Oh, yeah. Well, shoot. Hopefully, this does it. If not, we'll do. We'll execute the JavaScript. It's just when you do that, it's it's um, it's asynchronous. So then our test gets weird. <coughs> I'm afraid to move the mouse. Okay. So, yep, you're right. That didn't. So let's do move to element. Let's just try the. Because when we execute the, um, or, you know, maybe we can do. We'll try that. That's running. We'll do browser execute and 
Um, we'll go. I'll go to the API docs real quick too, so that way. So body args and optional callback. So we know that um, scrolling 400 was enough and brought us to like middle of the page. Let's say what's 200. That's a nice little bit of a scroll. So we'll copy that and we'll say execute there. Um, so for the, again, for those who don't work with ES6 JavaScript a lot, we just created a an anonymous function, and since it do, it only does one line, we're just saying return this value. Um, so it's a nice little one-liner. What's the actually, array? What? With the array at the end that you're passing in? Well, yeah, because the array says an empty um, arguments. Okay. So, so like, I'm really excited because I'm pretty sure in PHP we're getting this, and I am so excited. Um, for shorthand closures. Um, I mean, it's still kind of longhand, but it's a lot better than having to constantly type function or static function for my array maps and array filters. Um, so this ran, and I was too busy paying attention to that. So it looks like it didn't scroll it's still saying is not cannot be located but when you look at it in the browser it first loads uh, an error page of some sort and then it loads because that, that happens too with php unit because my local environment it hits so on the first load it doesn't know that it's the um the the simple test user yet so it actually is hitting the um the default database and then the second time around, the simple test user agent string and cookie is set, and it knows like, oh, I'm using this other database prefix. Um, so that's one of that. If you were to watch um, the functional test and the functional JavaScript test, it will do the same thing on your local. Um, if there's an error on your local, or it'll show like your local site. So let's try this execute two. We're gonna pause. I'm gonna run this pause thing because we'll do pause indefinitely because I am just baffled. <laughs> All right. Watch, now that we called browser execute scroll two, it's going to work in that. Um, yep. So let's see. Like your dog turned into three blue dots. <laughs> no, maybe my phone died. Let me see him. Oh, he's still out there. <laughs> I bet the battery died on my phone. So, so far while we wait for this to go, are there any major questions? About night watch or curiosities? Um, for setting up these tests. I had a quick question. How, how did you get it to uh, actually show up in Chrome again? Okay, so for that, it didn't... Of course, it came back, so sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. Um, so to do that, scroll down to the .env file. So, so this is a big, like, asterisk like if you run this with ddev and lando you can't run it this way like it will always be headless in those environments um but there is the there are the it's commented out so i oh chrome driver so in the chrome driver or the web driver chrome arguments you you want to pass it this disable gpu headless and no sandbox um, and that hides it in the background. But if you're debugging locally, like on your machine, you can comment that out 
um, to receive the full browser experience. Got it. But that doesn't work on DDEF or Lando. No, because it's inside of a right. container. Yeah. So that's one where you could, um, you know, you could, yeah. Yeah. If you want to do it this way, you have to run it locally. Okay, cool. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. That's, I was trying to think if there's some other like neat, tricky way. There's not. I mean, maybe there is. Maybe somebody has one, but. Oh, well. Um, is that it? Yeah, that's. It doesn't so, exist. It's not there. What do you mean? It, it's not there. I don't know. I I typed in the same. <laughs> I typed in the same thing on my on that that test site. Is that tugboat example on nine dot two dot x head? Yeah. And is my local a nine dot one? And did you introduce a backwards compatibility change or um, breaking change? I mean. Hell uh -huh. yeah, shit. Look, it says nav primary button, huh? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> you need to be on the latest head, man. So here's a good lesson for everybody. If you're going to write tests for core, make sure you're on the latest development branch head. <laughs> so um, we If there will... was already a test, you would have caught that. Yep, yep, but this is already test. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> um, all right, so let's... Cancel that, and we're going to get back to here. And we're going to change this to not visible again. Um, I'm going to copy that assertion right there. Or I guess I can paste it here. And I'm going to copy. Oh, man. So we're going to make a to-do. And this is for 9.1.x in 9.2dx it is fix before patching and and believe it or not that's actually going to change one more time that's not allowed <laughs> <laughs> but whenever that patch gets committed we'll fix the test too depending on whatever gets fixed it gets committed first so that fixed that problem but it didn't scroll this is the other problem. Um, but let's just at least try this. And let me run it and I'll read the question. So if you're in Lando or DDEV and you remove the Chrome driver args environment variables, it will run in the browser, but it's going to yell at you that there's no display attached. Um, so by running it with, so let me, so Real quick, I wish I could like show this better, but I want to make sure we like can see everything. So if you were in Lando and you removed this um, statement, so it wouldn't try to run in a headless mode, it would complain that there is no display attached. I don't know who remembers having to run the XVFB command in Travis CI or whatever. It's like XFVB 99 and you emulated a display so unless you ran this command, it's just going to error out. Like it will just not run because Chrome or WebDriver, probably I'm assuming the WebDriver part of it would say, sorry, there's no display attached to your system. So it can't render. Um, so you have to run it in headless. And I swear this thing expected if it is visible, but got not visible because it didn't scroll. Come on. Nightwatch JS scroll element into view, um, which is going to go. Or we'll just do. We'll do that and we're going to pause it because now did this class change? I guess I could check if I, I don't think it did, but I would check it. <laughs> yeah, and I guess I could. I have the code right here, so I could have checked that from the get go. Vero templates. It's gonna be into page. Page under page. under uh, layout, and then under page. Yeah, it is. Okay. Safe footer. There it is. So that has not changed. Um, so let's run the test again. All right. 
There we go. All right, work. Work. And I think this block of time goes until three, so I really want to land this before then to be um, considerate of everybody's time. And I would love to just have it be, I just want it to work. I just want to walk out of here. We're like, woo, we wrote a, we collectively wrote a test for the Olivero theme to make it, help get it stabler for Drupal 9.2. Mm -hmm. Mike, when is the deadline for getting Olivero stable? That is a great question. I just asked uh, yesterday that to Lowry Esclo, who's a core committer, and he says it is either May 17th, or May 31st. So we're going with May 17th. We have a number of accessibility issues in front of us, and the accessibility maintainers are uh, super busy, so it's hard to get them to review stuff. But uh, the, that and the testing are two main things that we got to do. There's a couple like technical debt stuff that we shouldn't have any problem doing. So the month of March would be a great time to sprint on all these tests if we can get it running. Um, it mm -hmm. crashed out on me and didn't pause. Um, Another time that would be great to sprint on these tests is this Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. This, well, yeah. This Saturday. Sorry, we're we're getting ready. For, I hope everybody now is armed with knowledge on ways to work with Nightwatch, and would be comfortable for sprinting on Saturday. Um, I don't remember if I said it or not. I plan on being there, but I'm getting my first COVID vaccine on Friday, mm -hmm. so I didn't know I'd be eligible. And all of a sudden, like, hey. You're eligible. And I was like, great. And I almost scheduled it for today without realizing. So I didn't. Um, but I picked Friday. And I'm hoping that I'm hoping that I don't get knocked out of commission. So I would love to work on this on Saturday. Cool. Well, supposedly the first one isn't too bad, but knock on wood. Well, yeah, what I've right. heard is if you've had COVID, the first one is really bad. Mm. And the oh, second that's one, right. Because you had it. Yeah. Well, I was assumed because it was in March of last year and they wouldn't test me because I wasn't yeah. sick enough. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm waiting to see. I hope it's not too bad, but why? Ah, it's crashing, isn't it? Or did it just pass? Well, testing if is not visible. Wait, it's like it won't even get to this get locate. It's crash. It's like it won't run that line of code. Oh, shoot. Because it's, it's, it's a callable. You have to run it. Okay, that's why. Um, you have to pass in a function? Yeah, that would do it. And what does the function do? It's a callback. Oh, and then you need to throw all that. that. Makes sense. So now, so that's how they handle the async stuff. Yeah. So then it's this assert, this pause. Um. Yeah. Log it because it looks like it returns result. It's an object, a status, and the X and Y. Um, so it's always good to read the docs because <laughs> twice now I let that crash or it didn't even crash. It's just it executed and had no callback. So it assumed that the test was done, mm -hmm. which is silly because there was stuff after it. But it's like after you call that, it just considers it, eh, I'm done. Determine an out. I don't know. There's always time to improve later. Right now, we just want to prove uh, that it works. Yeah, get something going. Prove this up front, a... improve later. So, fun history. Mike, how long has it been since the Olivero theme first came to uh, fruition as a contrib project? Um. I actually, hold on one second. I'll tell you when I first like reached out to Larry, because I have that conversation right now when we were actually considering about considering doing it. Um, it's been over a year. It did scroll. 
Did it scroll? Cannot read property pause of undefined. Well, oh, shoot. So that's one thing too. Um, we don't want to use an anonymous function here. Okay. Because it lost all context. That um, makes sense. So I, we first started thinking about working on it on May 13th, 2019. Wow. And so, so, so like one year. So wait, wait, no. It's, al it's almost two, two years. In May, it'll be two years since when we like started working on it, you know. And that includes the design. We didn't start working on the design till like three or four months later. And then there was a. Uh, I did that proof of concept, which which was just HTML. Mm. And then at Florida Drupal Camp 2019, which was like right as it was like the last camp before COVID. Um we did a sprint there and we actually got the theme kind of working a little bit. Nice. And then it's just, and then we got it into core for 9.1. And now we're trying to get it stable for 9.2. It's way more work than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> well, I will help write all the uh, tests are my fun thing. Like that's what I enjoy doing. So. <laughs> Um, if you if you give me a list of like Matt, we need this tested. I I, I have some stuff. I'll 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 that. maybe create like a little meta issue. I want to I want to create some tests too because I want to learn how to do it. Because honestly, I've never written tests before, so I'm like really excited to learn about this. I'm excited that I'm learning right now. He goes, yep. And we've we've got a couple existing issues too that have uh, yep some testing tasks for me. All right. Look, hey, look at me scroll scrolled. down. Woo! All Yay! Right. So we asserted that um, the menu does its thing when you scroll. Um, so, and then I did the console.log here when it moved to the element. You know, maybe this can be optimized. So, we'll figure all right. Out so, so go into that go into that page that HTML that twig and and let's let's break something and see what happens. See like if it fails. If I drop the footer name. Is this uh, footer? No, s scroll up and like rename the button or something. Or, oh, there's a button in here. Yeah, the button's right there. Yeah, there it is. Like if we did the breaking change that you <laughs> committed uh -huh. yeah. to nav primary button. No, that's not it. I copied what it is. There we go. Yeah. Wide nav expand. Um, Just add like X's into it. That's what I always do. Well, no, I mean, but this is like, this is going to prove like you change the class. Yeah. Because what happens most oftentimes people make changes mm -hmm. and then they forget to update the tests. And that's what the tests are there for is be like, Hey, something changed. Did, is this expected changes or not? Um, which is the whole point of visual regression testing is like, did you mean for this page to look different? You can say mm -hmm. yes or no. Um, what was the solution to get the window to scroll down? There was, um, there's a, there's a method called get location and view. And what I was doing is I was just calling it, but apparently you have to give it a callback function. And then you can do assertions inside the callback for that um, element. There's that like move to element view. Those things just didn't seem to work, um, but this does. Um, I wonder if that move to element works I don't know why, but like on form elements, maybe is what it's more suited for. Um, I'm not too sure, but now the test is going to hang. And if we wait three more seconds or none, so we got the error where um, testing if mm -hmm. element nav dot primary button is not visible and it could not be found because we changed the class name in the template. That's awesome. Cool. Is there a way that you can uh, just throw a patch up on uh, on that Nightwatch issue? I can give you the link to that. It's the one that Brian I, created. I just dropped the issue in the link in there. There is Perfect. a uh, existing fork, fork and feature branch on that issue. Okay. So okay. you can either create a p patch and, and we'll get it up oh. there or, or something like that. Obviously, your patch is against 9.1, but... Like I would honestly like to like work on it maybe the more Saturday morning before right here. Has anybody here used the new fork stuff yet? Me. Few. Okay, so we're gonna run through it because this has been my new favorite thing because I am lazy and I don't like to have to clone down code. 
It's so, the best. So we're going to go to the web IDE inside GitLab. Um, doop, doop, doop. So we're going to go to core, test, Drupal, Nightwatch. Nope, test site. Sorry, we're going to go to test site first. We're going to click here. We're going to do new file. And what did we name it? We named it the... <laughs> Test Olivero site install script. We're going to do create file. So the web IDE is nice because you can do a bunch of changes at once. Otherwise, we could like do like add one file and a few things like that. Um, so we'll paste this as is. I'm just add a um, to do right now. Blank line at the top. What what? There's a blank line at the top. Thank you. Um, I recently had an issue with that and it broke our installs on tugboat, but not locally or in production. And I couldn't figure it out why. And it was because <laughs> of that blank line at the top. Oh gosh. And it drove me nuts. And thankfully tugboat helped me solve the problem. Um, so, so what was it like right now? We need standard install for dependencies dependencies figure them out here so we'll just add that um should it's missing like a yeah we'll just add that and now so this saved it in there right i think so so now we'll create the olivero menu test inside of tests new file So I guess even if this local repo doesn't have, like if you use my base or this like example here, why is everything adding an extra new line at the top? Um, you could copy and paste stuff into here at least. It's not extremely uh, the, the right way to do it, but you could, like you could work on it in this um, example and then copy things over via the um, GitLab UI. Um, what's an actually appropriate name for this test before besides da burger? I think we should. Don't they have like a bunch of like unicorns or something in some of these tests or llamas. something like that? Because llamas, of Wim, Wim Lears, there's llamas everywhere. But we'll say. Let's just um, leave some. I want, I want. I want some emojis in here. I think Sally would love it. Yeah. So we'll just leave it to one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very that's subtle. Tasteful. I like it's it. Tasteful. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we can remove that to do. You may want to include the word hamburger just for accessibility. We'll leave the emoji to spell it out also. Good call. Birder. Just, just Birder. the blind. There you person. go. All right, there we go. Um, spacing looks weird. All right, so now we're going. That's it, right? Right. The test script that we're going to commit. Um, we're going to commit to add menu test we'll commit and so that was committed we're going to create the new merge request we're going to name the merge request here because we're going to add more stuff to it we'll hit submit so now that this loaded let's go back to the issue and we'll refresh and you'll see that it now says there's a merge request and it's queuing test and we're getting a live preview on tugboat you know for a tugboat and a tiny boat that thing does a lot of work a lot of good work i don't think the live preview will actually install the theme yet it won't no but so uh, i if anyone's interested in that i created an issue to uh, have tugboat by default install the umami profile because at that point we get like free content and stuff like that and i also talked about having each core subcomponent uh being able to specify its own like tugboat yaml file so we could even like do special things uh like you know install different things like that but right now it's awesome. just gonna be yeah does this hey Good. It's always guessed, good to guess admin, admin. Um, you know, our, our test, our, our merge request only adds a test, so it doesn't do any good logging into here. But 
Um, so yeah, so that's how you can contribute to core without having to clone Drupal, I guess. Like, right, we you, you could grab my um, demo environment for just like learning how to write tests. And I went to this, um, there was already an existing branch, so I couldn't show you how to create a new branch. But I went to it and I used the GitLab web IDE and I created a pull request without having to do anything. Well, now, now the test should fail, right? Because you're, you used the old, uh, nope, CSS class it. name. You fixed I, that. Okay. I, I fixed it before, um, committing it. So if we oh, look so here, awesome. um, yep. On scroll. Why have not Okay. So uh, in terms of getting ready for my, uh, from my boss. See ya. I, Daniel, uh, do you have a question? Or somebody was. Yeah, yeah, I was just talking about. I hate talking to other people, so I don't do it. Um, yeah, I was just uh, ad living really that, um, like, how many tests do you think is a good number of tests? Because there's a big debate about, like, how much test coverage you should have for things. Everything should have a test. Um, there's no such thing as too little test coverage. Now, there's a point of absurdity. Um, so, uh, what can I show to you all? Um, 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 one second, let me. opening something in code. So I'm working on a um, product called Brewed Up, which is like untapped, but for coffee. So instead of checking into all the beer you drink, you check into all the coffee you drink and how you brewed it. Um, and inside here, I have several different entities, like check-in, coffee roast, roaster, and tag. Um, like I said before, I do test-driven development. So sometimes I write some kind of like stupid frivolous test, but it helps me make sure that basic bugs are fixed. So like in the coffee roast test here, um, do I have, so entity test base, I even have it where it says test exists. So it ensures that the, the entity type definition is discoverable and parsed for um, inside a Drupal because I worked on all this code. I wrote all this code before I even installed the Drupal site. So I will write a absurd amount of basic boilerplate tests to prevent me from having to install Drupal and make sure things are there. Um, so I guess it depends on how you work. Like if you do test-driven development, then you are going to have the right amount of tests. Um, if you don't do test-driven development, you're gonna have fewer tests and you may not know what you need to test because your code um, may not be, you know, like completely abstracted and testable. Um, a good example is my previous live streams for simplytest.me. Um, with some of the testing, you know, it, it's 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 a blend of what's not a waste of time. It's the best way to put it. Um, you know, test coverage is great. What is it like? Martin Fowler is the one who wrote like the book on test driven development, and then he went and worked at Facebook and was like in culture shock because they weren't writing tests. But there was no point to because they were at such a scale that you couldn't test for things. Like there's no point in wasting time writing the perfect test for it just to be like completely destroyed because it ran in production and production was unpredictable. Um, so just best, I would just use your um, best judgment. Like don't, don't spend like a day writing all these tests that may not ensure stability in your platform. Like if it ensures stability and it makes you develop faster, then yes. You know, like this code testing it exists not Colin. entirely, but oh, sorry. sorry. No, it's all good. Keep going. I was like, like I have a really good um, habit of somehow messing up my namespaces or my annotations, and like this really basic check would catch if um, I, you know, if I mistyped the annotation here, or if there was some kind of invalid key in my entity annotation, it would cause the entity type manager to throw an exception when it tried to fetch the definition. Um, and when you're first writing your code and first starting a project, that's really beneficial because running this test takes two seconds 
flushing your caches in Drupal and clicking around on pages takes a minute. And that's a difference of 58 seconds. And those 58 seconds add up over time. Um, so that's why I'm a big fan of tests. And, but only when it's appropriate and you know gives you the most productivity, if that helps. I didn't answer, but I hope it helps guide the answer. Yeah, I don't think there's any you know solid answer to it, but yeah, all critical features, I guess. Yeah, yeah, like the critical features, and just one that you know, like you know, I believe in. Um, you know, you should be able to deploy six times a day, if not twenty times. Like you shouldn't be afraid to deploy. You should be able to deploy on Fridays. You know, Fridays at five p.m. Walk out and go get you know yourself a dinner or whatever beverage. Um, and not have to worry because you have test coverage and that's kind of like your guidance, you know, exactly. That's a, a point that I make in some of my test talks. Uh, when you're really, uh, when you're really well covered, you're not going to have any of those times when you pop up in bed in the middle of the night, they like, Oh my God, this is going to break, uh, because you got it. Although, uh, the deploying 20 times a day for my two big projects right now each of my test suites like i've got one that uh, has older tests that are all in b and newer tests that are all in drupal test traits running both of those takes over an hour now because there's well, six thousand steps uh but we can do four a day yeah there's you there's within reason um why did this unused statement oh it, it's I, already running an updated test Oh, okay. I'm going to leave it. Um, yeah, there's there's that. And also, like, people in Drupal are way too happy to run Dr Drupal cache rebuild. Um, like, I see people doing it first, then config import, then up DB, then again. And, like, oh, um, I plan on doing a series about high-performance um, de Drupal deployments because you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't even need to run cache rebuild when you deploy Drupal. Um, there, there's there's ways to avoid that and you can easily speed up your deployments but that's a whole different topic for a different day um if anybody's interested in that i would absolutely watch that and i yeah. would have our devops people watch that as well everybody's interested in that oh well i will make time for it through online and sell tickets <laughs> um <laughs> maybe it'll be my drupal camp Asheville talk because that's coming up this summer hoot, hoot. there I gotta make sure second, to my favorite second camp. best camp. Oh, behind mid camp. Thanks for saying that about mid camp. No, wait, yeah. I, have a, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, are there any? I know we're coming up on time, um, and I know there's going to be boffs and other great things happening at the camp. Are there any other questions? I'm excited to do work on this. So thank you, Matt. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Anybody who wants to uh, keep this going uh saturday we're gonna sprint on tests for olivero so mm -hmm. what time is that start brian 10 o'clock 10 to 2 central time yes i'm gonna be uh, i might be uh, working a little bit earlier than that too i like to work in the morning so maybe um yep so here give back saturday 10 a.m to 2 p.m central daylight time um, which i guess everybody in the world's finally on daylight savings right europe yep. made their switch okay um because that week is rough trying to figure out the difference. So yeah, so 10 to 2, um, I'll be there if I'm not too groggy. Or maybe it'll put me in that perfect test riding sp spot where I won't be hung up on, you know, going down the rabbit hole on bike shedding. And I'll just be loosey-goosey <laughs> and uh, cranking out tests. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Matt. And I think the, the fact that we were able to get a, uh, a, a merge request up for this is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Took longer than I thought, but I'm glad that we got here, and I hope everybody learned something. So thanks for coming. Um, go enjoy the rest of the conference. I think there's just there's a, one more. There's like a boff session, and then it's the uh, social stuff. Cool. So go on and have fun. Bye, everybody. Right. Thanks, thanks, everybody. Thanks, sure. Matt. Yeah.